everyone. I'm Sean Smith, and we're here for our first Coffee Talk episode. This is just a platform for our student athletes, especially our student athlete advisory committee, just to have some open discussions about what's going on in the world right now. And our, our first topic that we're going to discuss just has to do with living in this current uh, COVID-19 environment as a student and especially as a student athlete. So here for our first episode, we got Jordan Peterson from the softball team, Lauren Wallace from the volleyball team, Gabby Bloomdahl from the softball team, Trey Larimer from the baseball team, and Katie Budoff from the equestrian team. Thanks for being here for the first Coffee Talk episode, guys. So the first thing I just want to start out with, just after last spring, with just the sudden cancellation of classes and and sports, just how has it been for everyone being back on campus and just adjusting to life uh, as a student and student athlete during this uh, COVID-19 time that we're in? I think it's definitely super nice to be back here, especially knowing what it was like to be at home and doing schoolwork, like having online classes. Like, it's so much better to be in this setting, even if I'm not actually going to classes because a lot of mine are on Zoom. It's still nice just to be like in Crookston and have that environment. The same, I mean, we left so suddenly last year, like all your friends were gone before you even knew it. So it's nice to be back, see everyone. Like you're not in person with classes most of the time anymore, but you still see people around, which is really nice. It's really nice to have like a schedule of something to go to or like roommates to talk to that you're not related to. <laughs> So that's been awesome being back here. Yeah, it's really nice being, I mean, back here. I mean, being with your roommates, being people you haven't seen since, I mean, we got sent home. So it's really nice being with everyone again and starting to get in the mix of uh, doing stuff here pretty soon. Yeah, I know, like, distance learning was hard on a lot of us. So I think just being on person on campus really helps a lot of us get back into the swing of things and hopefully get back into some normalcy now throughout the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. JP, I know you pretty much live in town year round or have since you've been a student athlete. How has it been just to have, uh, you know, more than a few students just back in town and just the normal uh, campus environment compared to, you know, just what you're dealing with there for from March until, you know, mid-August uh, without uh, many students here in Crookston? Um, it's every year in the summer, it's really different up here. Cause it's like the town slows down a lot. Um, it's not as busy. I mean, it's just the locals. So, um, it's so nice having everyone back around again. Someone to talk to is actually my age. Cause there's not a lot of college students per se in the town and in the area cause it's a small farm town. Um, so I don't know. It's nice. It's nice to have people again and just the hustle and bustle of normal life. You guys all kind of touched on it a little bit in your own way, but just what was the biggest thing that you guys missed about being on campus uh, through that couple months stretch? Obviously, the summer months, it's normal not to be on campus, but that March, you know, from the spring break time period to early May, I'm sure it was just, uh, there were a lot of things you guys were missing there. Yeah, I mean, or, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. But uh, from my perspective, I mean, on the softball girls in this too, it's just that we missed our season kind of. So, I mean, like, that was just a big thing. We missed our season and we didn't get to finish out our season. And I think we were both had kind of high hopes for this season and for last season. And it's kind of, it stunk that we had to get sent home and not be able to play our whole season. So, I mean, it's hard. It's hard getting up to go online, Zoom classes and stuff like that. It's, it's a lot more fun being interactive with the teachers and stuff like that. I think just even the like activities offered on campus was something that we all missed. Just like after eating dinner, just going out and playing spike ball on the lawn, just like getting the interaction with like not only like our teammates and other teams, but just other students on campus. I agree about the sports thing and it wasn't even my normal season. So I can't imagine how you guys were feeling with that, but it is weird. I'm sure we're all in the same boat. Like haven't played our actual sport like since March like March to September is the longest I've gone without actually playing real volleyball for like the longest time so that was definitely a huge adjustment and it's going to be so weird to get back but obviously I'm excited for it. For us it was really frustrating because we did get to complete our normal season and we qualified to go on to Texas for semifinals or sorry zones for the second time in a row but it just kind of done because it was right before zones that we got canceled but uh yeah I definitely miss like 
just being able to hang out with people or ditch homework to go get like food in the middle of finals and stuff so we didn't really get to do that at home yeah I agree I, especially with uh, Lauren the whole like I don't think I've ever not played softball that long in my life especially with my team so um and like Trey said like we had momentum on our side like we were really looking forward to the season so I think I miss softball in general in the team more than anything this uh summer long summer so that kind of gets into just how much are you all just itching to get back onto the field or courts in any way shape or form right now yeah I mean the most we've done as a volleyball team is like playing two on two sand volleyball so definitely excited to not have the sand to deal with <laughs> and no wind that'll be nice <laughs> Yeah, I think we're all excited to get back, even if it's not just our sport, just other sports kind of getting started, too. I mean, it's just nice to have sports around. Like, we're all kind of sports people, and we want to be around sports, even if it's not our own. Just having your sport back, it's going to be nice. And then, including for us, we can't – I know the baseball players can't wait to get back on the field and start working and start doing stuff. So, it's going to – we're all excited for it, and we can't wait till that day happens where they say, hey, let's get this done, and you guys can finally go and start doing some activities of your sport. Have there been quite a few activities just on campus that have kept you guys just active or different things? I know there are some intramurals and some other things that campus is doing to try to keep just the students engaged. Just how is that going from your guys' perspective so far? I know it's obviously not competing in your respective sports, but how is that doing and just giving you guys something to do and just talk about some of those activities that you've been able to do? They had um, soccer on the mall there for a while, and that was kind of cool. Uh, I know me and, like, two other softball girls were joining in with all the so or soccer girls. Yep. Um, big difference there, you know, hand sport versus foot sport. But it was really fun to kind of get to do, like, a different sport that, like, involved, like, meeting other people and, like, getting to just run around and, like, have fun playing sports, even if it wasn't our sport. The uh, Wellness Center, um, Lauren and I work there. Um, has been doing like running a bunch of events and stuff, which has been really good. I think um, keeps us busy because we're constantly working. But um, <laughs> but and all like they set up a frisbee golf thing across campus, and like us and a couple teammates went out and played the other night. Um, like there's just so there's things to do that we're trying to find ways that games that are socially distanced or things that like we can do outside while we still have decent weather. In addition to the student life, obviously a key component is just classes. I know. You know, there's some uh, in person, some online. Just how's that going from your perspective? Uh, and how have you guys all adjusted to just the new way of doing classes and how that looks? I think it's just so nice to actually be on campus because even if the classes are online, you can still like meet with the teachers or you still run into them in the hallways. And it's just much more of like normal. Actually, leave your room for like two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> then when you're at home so I really like just being able to like I know everyone hates ADMs but I'm so excited I have ADMs this semester just so I get up and actually go to class so that's been really fun mm -hmm. and it's nice just to be surrounded by other people who also have homework to do and like other things like that because then it's like you can kind of hold each other accountable almost like I have a class with Katie and she's one of my roommates so we'll be like hey this is due tonight like have you started it and it's just nice to have that environment I think even those mixed classes where we're half online, half in person, like those in-person days just like help so much, just getting to like be able to talk with people and work in groups and just that ability to even meet one day a week in person just is so nice. Being on a small campus is just one of the perks that we have here at Kirkston. What are the biggest components that you guys just feel you're lacking kind of in your life? I think you've touched on one big one with this, the athletics aspect, but just is there anything else that you feel like you're kind of missing in this environment that we're in right now or do you feel like you're just getting those things in different ways right now um it's definitely harder to get around with the whole team like by this point in the year usually like I know all the freshmen's names which I do now but like I know them the first couple days like I see them they see the whole team like um it's all the new people and returners like don't necessarily see each other anymore so that's tougher and we have to be more creative in ways to like communicate with each other and see each other every day so that's definitely been different and a little bit harder to deal with. I agree yeah like by now we would have spent so much time with our team like 
even just traveling on a bus like that's when you really get to know people so it's weird not having that and you kind of have to like almost force things mm -hmm. and be like okay nothing's actually mandatory but like we want to hang out so how does this work and then maneuvering around that is definitely difficult but I think it just forces us to be creative so I think it's honestly a good thing I don't know, for us, it's really weird because we hold an open tryout to get all of our levels of riders in the fall, and we haven't had our tryout yet, so we don't even know everybody on our team at this <laughs> point because it keeps getting pushed, so it's just definitely weird because we would have been, like, preparing for our first show. That would have been, like, two weeks, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure for the in-season sports, I mean, Lauren, especially right now, I mean, like you said, you would have been what I mean almost a month into playing you know and you would have had two big tournament road trips and now yeah. you're sitting here you know that same amount of time and you hardly spent any time probably with your team outside of just you know yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much and it's weird like even having we had a meeting right when we got back and we were six feet apart wearing masks so I was like I can't even see your face and like I don't know if you're like smiling it's just it's definitely different it just gets me into my next question just with with the whole mask component how is everyone adjusting to that and how do you think that's changed life I know you kind of touched on a big one that I feel is just like you go somewhere and you think it's someone but you can't really tell because they're you know half of their face is covered so you're like oh is that Lauren is that JP I, I think it is but I'm not sure uh, but what else is that adjusted for you guys uh, working out and playing softball on a mask is a different battle outside and uh, mask tan lines are nice <laughs> but they're not terrible you get used to them a bit so and like I'd I can speak for everyone I think here I'd rather wear a mask all the time and get to play my sport and be in school than not at all you know mm -hmm. you guys have a favorite mask that you you found so far or do you just kind of rotate through through different masks that you wear uh, the ones I got at Hugo's at work are my favorite. <laughs> Trey, were you going to say something? Oh, yeah. Well, I was just like going back to the other question. It was just, it's something to adjust to. I mean, wearing a mask is, isn't the most fun when you got to do it, but I think we'd all say, all agree on like what Jordan says that we would 100% wear a mask all the time everywhere if it gave us the opportunity to play our sport. Um, it's just a lot. It's just, I think a lot of us would give up a lot of things to be able to go play on a court or a field or something right now. And um, yeah, it's just, it's something we got to do and hopefully we can get through this and then get back to playing our sports. That's, I mean, that's what we're kind of here for. So it's really, really something we're looking forward to. What's just been your favorite part about being back on campus so far? I think you guys have touched on some key aspects, but just is there some other things that have been great about being on campus back to, you know, obviously the summer and then um, being away during the spring there. I think getting out of the house, <laughs> like that quarantine was a long one. I don't know about you guys, but I have two younger brothers and it was a lot of fighting. So just like living with three girls is the best because they're clean. They do the dishes. It's just being with people your own age is amazing. I think uh, Katie, oh, sorry. Katie touched on it too. It's just getting back into a routine is nice. Being knowing what you're going to do and knowing you're going to do every day and stuff like that. Getting back into a routine of doing stuff and being more active than you were during quarantine and stuff like that. I think it's just really nice going back into a routine. Yeah, I kind of had the opposite thing of Gabby. I have an identical twin and a sister who's only a year older. So it's almost too much time with people who are too similar to me. So it's really nice to get back with like people with different personalities and <laughs> interests. It's a little too much together time. Yeah, I, I love being back with my roommates. It's our last semester together. So it's it was really important to me that we would get back and at least be able to live on campus. So I'm super grateful for that. When you were on quarantine, what were your guys' favorite things that you found to do? You know, obviously it wasn't, you know, like what you're dealing with now, but what was your favorite part of quarantine? If you had any. <laughs> Honestly, for me, I started making TikToks, which I never thought I would do, but they're not the dancing kind. They're like the crafty kind. So I did a lot of like DIY projects and kind of got used to the platform a little bit. And I just started posting and that was really fun. 
They're fun to watch too, so go watch them. <laughs> Thanks. I feel like TikTok <laughs> just exploded because of uh, of COVID. I mean, it was Definitely. start, it was taken off, but it just took it took it over the edge. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's what a lot of people ended up doing. Anyone else have a favorite thing that they found, maybe even rediscovered that they liked during quarantine? I guess I finally had time. Like, I watched a lot of Disney movies that I hadn't seen from, <laughs> since I was, like, 10. Because, you know, Disney Plus came out in the spring, too. So, maybe we watched a lot of Disney movies. So, that was kind of my quarantine. <laughs> I uh, got, I play piano, so I played piano a lot more, which is nice. I couldn't do too much because I had a, I was on crutches for most of quarantine. So it was anywhere I could sit and do something was kind of how I relearned and I don't know, spent my time. Um, I'm from Duluth, Minnesota. And if anyone's ever been to Duluth, you know, it's a very big like outdoor place. So I spent a lot of time going on hiking trails and visiting various parts in Duluth that I hadn't been to since I was younger. So it was kind of cool to just spend time in nature. Did you do anything on the North Shore, Gabby, in terms of? Yes, yeah, you know, Gooseberry Falls, Split Rock, all the, all the stops. <laughs> so what was your least favorite thing about quarantine? I mean, I think you probably touched a little bit on it, but. Uh, mine was working at a grocery store at all hours of the day, um, especially when people were um, trying to buy everything at once. But, so that was interesting. JP, I enjoyed see, I enjoyed seeing you at Hugo's though. I think oh. for a while going there was one of the only times I ever saw anyone from UMC. So it was yeah. nice. <laughs> it was my only social life, to be fair. But I think for me, it was um, thinking about like giving COVID to my parents somehow. Like I hated that idea. So I was like, it's honestly nice being back here. Not that I'm not being safe anymore, but just not having that like on my conscience thinking like, if I do something, am I somehow going to give my parents COVID? Because I mean, they're a little bit older. So that was something I worried about for sure. Yeah, I work in a nursing home. So I had the same fear, like every time going into work, giving it to one of my residents. So it's really nice not to be (laughs) back there. And we only have to wear masks here, not masks and face shields. So that's also really nice. How did everyone deal with the, you know, I think obviously just being kind of secluded from people leads into mental health. And I think that's a big, big aspect that a lot of people dealt dealt with is just not really having that social aspect. You know, it does not necessarily help with mental health of people. Just um, what did you guys do just to kind of keep some sanity and just keep, keep some normalcy uh, through that, and did anyone, you know, if, if anyone's willing to share if they ha- had any struggles just with through through that, or just the from the aspect of also just COVID and you know the fear of giving, you know, the anxiety of you know what if I get it or what if I give it to somebody. I guess my biggest stress thing was like finals week because finals are always stressful, but especially after being online and then not having like the support of your teammates and roommates, like, physically there. I didn't have to really worry about getting anyone else sick necessarily. Um, So it was just take care of myself and my cat. Um, But it was just having to stay busy. Like, as student athletes, we're always, like, going, going, going. And then, like, this all happened. It was, like, nothing's happening anymore. Like, I didn't even know what to do with myself. So it was, like, I found another job. I started trying to learn new music. I just had to find something to do every single day and just kind of refill my schedule and like reshift my priorities again. We definitely lucked out that it was nice outside during quarantine. That helped a lot. Like getting outside, like Gabby said, was a big thing. And being creative was a really good outlet for me. And then I also really strengthened my faith over the summer. So that was a really helpful tool for like anxiety and all of that. Like it's crazy how much that helped me. Yeah, no, I think all of that makes perfect sense to me. And that was a lot of what we dealt with too, is just, uh, you know, I think getting outside, going for walks uh, in the nice weather, doing gardening, different things like that was just a key aspect uh, to just maintain that mental health. And then also just from a faith aspect as well. Um, I know just from church and watching other sermons, from other churches as well was a big, uh, thing that I know helped both myself and my wife through everything. So I can see that aspect as well. But uh, yeah, does anyone else have anything that's kind of on their mind that they want to discuss and just kind of a 
hot button issue related to COVID and just, uh, or really any other subject that uh, anyone wants to broach right now as well. Happy to discuss it. Um, something that we've kind of been talking about in my room is how like it's a race against time right now for us outside sports it's with um, it's approaching here, the winter early season here and for like baseball and softball, like we have limits of what we can do for temperature based off of equipment um, and not being able to practice yet. It's really setting us behind. So I think like, that's just like something interesting that we've been talking about is how soon can we get out there before it starts getting cold and maybe Minnesota will be nice to us and stay warm for a while. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I mean, luckily right now uh, we're dealing with pretty good temps in late September and hopefully early October, it looks like we'll start out fairly nice. So that's, that's a bonus, but yeah, I mean, it's a true concern that, you know, uh, how long, how long will these temps last and, how long will it be, you know, nice enough for you guys to get outside? Because there's obviously a limit to what you can do outside or inside, I mean. So that's when it's nice to be an indoor sport. Thanks for having us, Sean. Yeah, thanks for being on. And uh, just, yeah, thank you for all those people that will end up watching this as well once we post it. And yeah, thanks for everyone for joining us on uh, the first episode of Coffee Talk.